Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Brian Williamson. Brian has worked in government at the New Zealand Treasury and is now a London-based consultant. His clients include governments, regulators, telcos, and tech companies. As a consultant, Brian works at the intersection of the digital economy and policy. This includes looking at the respective and complementary contributions of connectivity and applications to enhance economic and social outcomes. He recently published a study on the proposed internet tax for CCIA, and I'm sure the conclusions he reached will be reflected in his answers. So Brian, you know about our three plus one format. You get three questions and one soapbox moment uh, at the end. Uh, so let's start with the first question. How do you interpret the relationship between users accessing more content and services online and the impact this may have on telcos? Sure. Um, well, the, the bottom line is that users um, accessing more content and applications online has been a key driver for telcos investing in and monetizing broadband access, both uh, fixed access and um, mobile access. Um, users want better connectivity at home, at work, and on the move. Um, and that was highlighted by the COVID pandemic where we saw increased dependency on broadband access. Um, and that has been a good thing for telcos. Uh, that is how they make money on the investment in connectivity. And if you think about businesses generally, you do not hear them complaining about demand. Demand is a good thing for a business. Um, and indeed, if you listen to what telcos say to investors as opposed to policymakers, that is precisely what they say. They say increased demand is good for us, not bad. That's actually um, interesting, the, the dichotomy or the schizophrenia maybe that um, some companies may have between what they say to policymakers and what they say to investors. Um, and and um, yes, I think in general, the logic or the common sense, um, most people uh, would make them think that you're happy when your customers want more, especially when those customers are willing to pay for more, which is the case. Um, let's look at uh, the second question now. Um, what are the inherent dangers, if any, of big tech being requested to pay for the network of telcos? Uh, first of all, to be clear, when big tech utilize telco networks directly, and they do, they do pay for it, just like anybody else as users. So we should sort of put that to one side. Um, so what's proposed here goes beyond that. It's um, the idea is that some sort of levy, um, be that negotiated under the threat of regulation or imposed in some other way, would be imposed on big tech in relation to internet traffic. So I would call that a tax since it's something that, um, uh, it's not proposed that they have a choice about this. Um, so what is the impact of imposing an internet traffic tax? Well, it'd be harmful for three reasons. First of all, it would be discriminatory and therefore um, go against the principle of net neutrality um, because it would apply to some and not others. Um, secondly, it would discourage the development and use of content and applications. And this, the, the impact of that won't be limited to big tech because Many others use the services that large tech companies provide and most obviously cloud computing. Um, and I think you, you have to think a little bit laterally about how wide those impacts would go. They would, they would impact just about everybody in Europe in, in one way or another. To give a couple of examples, broadcasters are in a transition to delivery via online rather than terrestrial broadcasting. Um, so they would be in effect taxed because they use cloud computing to do those services. Um, startups and scale-ups, European startups and scale-ups would also be impacted. Um, and if you think of a policy agenda, decarbonization um, depends on moving from, if you like, shifting atoms around to, to virtualization of services. Um, and that would be discouraged as well. So it runs contrary to, to um, essentially all of Europe's digital transformation vision. I think um, maybe that's where the, the mistake comes is the, the framing that has been ongoing then, but saying it's 
a debate between telcos and big tech. At the end of the day, it seems to be a debate between telcos and tech, <laughs> not not necessarily big tech from what you say, and, and, and the evolution and the sustainability of tech and the choice that users will continue to have in terms of their tech providers. Um, that brings me to a third question, which is a bit of a, a, a more uh, specific question. Do you think it is appropriate, and, and I'm thinking of you as an economist here, to compare the contribution of big tech and telcos in infrastructure as suggested by some? Arguably, it isn't useful, um, and perhaps speaking as an economist, to make that comparison, because tech and telcos predominantly do different things. I mean, an economy is built through specialization of services. We don't expect everybody to do everything. Um, that's a basic insight. But let's just kind of leave that to one side and dive in anyway. So what do tech companies contribute? Well, they've made vast investments in terms of research and development um, and infrastructure. And that infrastructure overlaps a little with what telcos do, but it's predominantly different. It's data centers, that sort of thing. And those are very large investments on a global scale. Telcos do very little R&D these days. Um, that's mostly been picked up by vendors and others. Uh, but they do invest in, for example, broadband access. And in a sense, that's their core competency. Um, you would expect that. So there are, I think I should also mention that there are other investors in the telecom sector now. Um, there are entrants funded by long-term infrastructure funds. And actually, I don't think they've been calling for an internet traffic tax because they, they generally don't, um, they wouldn't be a beneficiary, but they would incur the, the reduction in demand. So it would harm their business case. Um, so I think that the key point is that everybody is invest, investing, but primarily in complementary things. So basically you have, let's say, a value chain and each part of the chain is paid by someone and, and those someones are complementary one to the other. There's not someone carrying the weight of everything in that, in that chain and, and others yeah. just profiting uh, over it, um, which, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's probably in every supply chain you have that, that people pay for their part, let's say. Um, so going beyond the, the economics and, and, and the common sense, um, I think we've reached the point now where... Um, you know, um, we know policymakers are going to be working on this. Um, it has been more or less announced that there would be a consultation uh, to look into this issue. Uh, some may consider it's not relevant, but it's at least good that, you know, there is a consultation uh, and, and that there is a discussion about this, this um, problematic or lack of problematic, depending on where you stand, I guess. Um, what is your message? Uh, you know, your soapbox moment is now. Uh, Ursula von der Leyen and Roberta Mazzola, the two strong women in Brussels, are looking at you and listening. What would be your message to the powers that be in Brussels? Um, my message is that um, an internet traffic tax would make the ecosystem smaller. Um, that's a kind of basic point. If you tax something, expect less of it. And so the internet kind of ecosystem would be diminished. Um, and I think it, this debate has been framed at times in terms of fairness. I don't see anything fair about diminishing the internet ecosystem. Um, so it's a bad idea. Um, it was rejected a decade ago, and it should be rejected now. But I understand that the costs and benefits um, will and should be assessed. Um, I just don't see anything on the benefit side of the ledger, and I can see a lot of costs involved in this proposition. Okay. Thank you, Brian. I mean, um, it, it, um, it is important, I think, and, and that would be my concluding remark, having listened to you, to frame this debate as it should be, which is this is a debate that affects the entire internet ecosystem. It is not a debate that only affects a few large companies, you know, sitting in a room and maybe shouting at each other and reaching a deal. Um, it it um, touches upon the fundamentals of how the internet functions and has functioned quite well, I think. And, and we're all thankful for it functioning during the COVID um, uh, pandemic. Uh, I think it has all allowed us to continue um, 
working, studying, communicating with each other. And so um, the message that I will take from this conversation is that uh, be careful in tweaking things that you might break uh, when you do so, because in this case, maybe there is no benefit to that tweaking, but a lot of dangers. So thank you very much, Brian, for this conversation. And I'm pretty sure that once the consultation is out, we might have a follow-up. Thank you.